Now let's talk about Myanmar, where the junta's grip on power is being tested. Rebel groups are mounting attacks. The offensive began some three weeks back. It has only intensified since. The rebels have inflicted heavy damage on Myanmar's military, and they're losing both outposts and people. So what is the extent of the junta's losses? At least nine towns and more than 150 outposts and military bases. That's what they've lost. And where are these towns? Six are in northern Myanmar and three in the northwest. These towns used to be military strongholds. They had local battalions here. But despite decades of control, the military could not stop the rebels. Three groups have joined hands. Myanmar National Democratic Alliance Army, the Tang National Liberation Army, and the Arakan Army. And they pose a serious threat. Because they haven't just taken territory, they're also seizing military assets. Reports say the region has lost six tanks and some armored vehicles. The junta was caught off guard and possibly outmatched. Going by local reports, local media reports, more than 300 soldiers and militia allies have surrendered. Around 40 of them tried to escape to India. They crossed into India's Manipur state. Indian forces caught them and they've been shipped back to Myanmar. Reports also say that the junta is struggling to respond. A counter-offensive was supposed to begin, but now it has been delayed. The military has conducted a series of airstrikes, also used heavy artillery, mostly to slow down the rebels. But these measures have been ineffective. Some troops have now been called back. They were manning smaller outposts in the north, near the areas where the rebels struck. The military has asked them to retreat, to join the forces to bigger strongholds. At bigger strongholds, rather. It seems the junta does not know what it's up against. The situation is still evolving, so the information is, is limited. But here's what we've been able to gather so far. The rebels have given this offensive a name, Operation 1027. And what is its goal? To challenge the rule of the army. And to control a significant portion of Myanmar. As I'm sure you can tell, this is a large-scale effort. The alliance of the three rebel groups is called the Brotherhood Alliance. It has mobilized in large numbers. How many fighters? At least 20,000. They are set to be taking part in this operation, 20,000 people. The end game is this, to make the military regime irrelevant in Myanmar. A few days ago, the Brotherhood issued a statement. I have a copy of it with me. This is what it says, and I'm quoting. Our primary objective is launching this operation. In launching this operation, are, are multifaceted. We are dedicated to eradicating the oppressive military dictatorship, a shared aspiration of the entire Myanmar population. So the military has a challenge on its hands. But the generals are not the only ones feeling uneasy. This offensive is a worry for India too. The rebels are fighting near the Indian border. On Monday, they went after two military camps. They were next to Mizoram, an Indian state in the northeast. And this situation is a tricky one. This offensive started, or happened rather, in the Chin state. The rebels there share close ethnic ties with the locals of Mizoram. The Mizos have ties with Myanmar's Chin community, and that has led to an influx. When the current round of violence began, more than 5,000 people from Myanmar fled to India. They came to Mizoram. And they took refuge in two local villages. These people are now asking for asylum. And this is a concern for India because if the violence escalates, more people could flee. And India would be forced to deal with a new refugee crisis. The rebels have the momentum right now. Looks like they won't stop anytime soon. So New Delhi is monitoring the situation and we will keep track.